What up y'all, my name is Jade Fox and this is the Major Looks channel. And today I got a real quick video, a little impromptu video. Um, these are going to be five different DIYs that you can do pretty quickly, pretty easily at home for some cooler pieces. Now I ain't gonna hold you, I am not a DIYer. I don't wanna do it myself, I want you to do it, okay? I wanna pay you to do it. I love paying professionals to do things professionally because in my opinion, this is just me, okay? I find DIY to look DIY. <gasps> That's just me, okay? I would rather buy something that is manufactured to look a certain way than to take something and then do it myself to make it look that way because I feel like there's holes. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. These are five DIYs that I can stand by. These are five DIYs that I've done before and I, you don't need a sewing machine, you don't need sewing experience and if you need help, a very quick YouTube video can help you out, okay? So this is for the girls, the bare minimum DIY girls, but you want some cool stuff, Keep listening, okay? So the first thing would be to cut off the collars and the cuffs of your jackets. What it does is it creates this cool kind of like Japanese inspired collarless kind of vibe. Uh, I very much like it. I would had a Levi's trucker jacket that was a bit oversized on me. I've had it for a year and I hadn't worn it. I took the tag off just a few months ago and ever since I cut off the collar and I cut off the cuffs as well as the hem on the bottom, I have been wearing it nonstop. I don't know why, I just like how it looks way better this way. And the only tools that you'll really need for this, I don't know, my girlfriend is a seamstress and so she has this tool, it's like a little blade. I'll insert the name of it right here and I'll also leave um, a link in the description on Amazon or something where you can buy one if you don't already have one. And it's a little time consuming, like it probably took me a good 30 minutes to do the entire jacket, but you're literally just going in and you're just clipping off uh, the stitches in there and that's all that you're doing. Like that's literally it. You can put it through the washer and dryer if you want to have some more of those like frayed ends or rather uh, raw edges on them if that's something that's more of your vibe. One thing that I do really love is it kind of gives it a, a Mesa Margiela vibe because when you take off the cuffs, it just has like the raw edge and we all know that Mesa Margiela does the raw edge look often. I think this is a really quick and easy thing to do, especially if you have a denim jacket that you don't wear and you want it to look a bit more modern, you want it to look a, a little bit more recent, absolutely do this. And for added effect, crop that hoe. The next one is actually something that I used to do a lot, and that is change the buttons. Um, I have a set from the brand Brainchild, and it's this really cool kind of like workwear style set, but the buttons on the top are pink. They're like pink and oversized. And normally for this type of top, you would see similar buttons to the shirt that I have now where they're just white plain buttons. Changing the buttons really changes the entire tone of a button down. If you have a simple white, simple blue, black, whatever button down, adding buttons that are oversized or adding like a tortoise button or just buttons that are of a different color can add such a unique element and makes that button down not look like a regular button down. It looks like a button down that you got from like a really cool boutique. And so changing the buttons on something actually has a lot of impact on pieces that are um, very button centric, such as a button down. And the only thing that you should need for this is the buttons, obviously, which you can honestly get anywhere. You can get, go to Joanne's, you can go to Michael's, any like arts and crafts store. You can also go online um, or even Etsy. You can also find uh, buttons there. Find the amount that you want, find the, the ones that you like, get some thread and a needle, boom, you're done. You can also take this to a tailor shop and they can do it for you. So this doesn't have to be fully DIY. You can take these elements to a tailor. Sometimes they'll even have like buttons to choose from there, depending on how big the tailor is, depending if it's like independent versus like a whole, you know, like a whole corporation. They might even have like thread and buttons for you to choose from because any place that does like button repair usually has buttons that you can choose from. And this next tip is to draw on it, paint on it. I had my girlfriend, I asked my girlfriend if she would so kindly uh, paint this design, this design that I saw on a coat that Tan France wore one time. I saw this coat one time. I love the design. I looked it up, way too much money for me to spend. So I asked Jaden if she could paint that design on it. And now I wear it all the time. This is a jacket from ASOS and it looks so much more expensive. And I think that this is just what a $2 paintbrush and like some $8 um, 
leather paint and boom there you go i think she even like wrote out with pen first and then went back over it with the paint i recently saw kaylani wear something from the same designer so definitely paint on your stuff y'all because it makes a cool look number four change your bag straps uh not every bag has interchangeable bag straps but for the ones that do go ahead and just buy a new back strap. I've absolutely had like plain bags before and I've bought like designer back straps and therefore my bag is no longer just a plain bag. This is a Marc Jacobs bag now because I've got the Marc Jacobs strap. So if you have a bag, specifically like I would think any bag that is, if it's not a designer, but even like a fast fashion bag usually come with like interchangeable uh, straps or you can at least take the strap off of it anyway. You can go on Etsy and find your own straps. You can also design your own straps. It's a little bit harder because you have to find plain ones, which I've never actually tried to look for myself. I can't imagine that that would be a difficult thing to do though, but just quickly change the, the strap from the bag. What it does is it creates one a really unique looking bag because most bags tend to have straps that match their bags or they at least complement the bag in some way or another. Um, but if you have a strap that is from a different bag or a strap that is just has a completely different design, you put it with that new bag or put it with that old bag that you have, it can create a really unique looking bag. And so change the bag straps. This is barely even a DIY. It's just buy a bag strap and just put that on your bag, girl. And that's it. And the very last one, like I said, we don't do a lot of DIY, so I only got five for you today. Uh, the last one is to crop oversized things. And this goes for shirts, vests, sweaters, um, dresses, like regardless of what it is, if you have something in your closet that is just too big, it's just like too big for your liking, that's a top or a dress, crop it. But don't crop it so that it's a this kind of crop, crop it so that it's just a little bit shorter in the length of the piece. Th those are the kinds of crops that I'm talking about. I had this gray, I don't know what you would call it. It was, it was kind of like a sleeveless top, but it was huge. Uh, and I got it from ASOS like three years ago and I never wore it because it was just so big. It didn't really look great on me. And so what I did is I just cut it and now I wear it all of the time. And basically what I wear it as a vest now, um, because it was much bigger, this, the, the shoulder area of the top was just a little bit wider than I wanted it to be. I, I thought it was gonna be more of like a tank top, but since it kind of like cascades a little bit past my shoulder, it gives more of a vest kind of vibe. And so I wear t-shirts underneath it for the full vest kind of effect. And so oftentimes when you're cropping stuff, you don't have to crop it into a crop top. You can just crop it into something else. I can imagine that if you were to crop a dress into a t-shirt, you probably wear that more than cropping a dress into a crop top. Basically play around with where you crop things because you can crop things into a crop top or you can just crop things into a shorter length, which can make it a bit more cheeky, give it a bit more of like a unique kind of fit to it, especially depending on what it is. And I love that when you can crop something and it takes it from one thing into something else, like that was fully on, that was a full men's tank top that I now wear as a vest, like a women's vest. And so playing with the crops, cut things that are super oversized for a more like boxy shape as well. You can do that too. Sometimes um, I'll have a shirt and I will literally put like a square, like a shoe box, anything that's like square, square-ish shape. I will lay it on top and just cut literally a square out of it. And then I'll have a new, like really, really boxy t-shirt. I, re I like really boxy things though. So if boxy isn't your thing, crop it. So crop it, you just don't gotta crop it into a boxy shape. All right, y'all, that's it for me. Those are all the DIYs. Like I said, I don't be doing shit myself. I do so much myself already. I love to pay people to do the things because I know what I did to do. <laughs> but these are things that I have done and I will probably continue to do too. So let me know uh, if you've done any of these before, if you have any suggestions on low maintenance, bare minimum DIYs. If I have to go to multiple stores, sweetheart, I'm just gonna buy a new shirt. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna buy a new shirt for all that. So if you have any suggestions, some low hanging fruit suggestions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll see y'all very soon in another one. And do not forget, wear what you want, wear what you like, wear it out. Peace.